Hello there, this is Roberto Matthews with another tip. This is not a quick one today, this is a little bit more involved, but I wanted to show you something that I learned just recently that helped me learn how to do uh, SVG freehand path coding, um, and it should help you, especially if you're a visual learning learner. So basically what we're going to do today is we're going to create our SVG tag, and um, we're going to create a view box and we're going to do everything on based by a hundred. The reason I'm going to do based by a hundred is that it's really easy to see. Um, and, and since it's a vector ga graphic, no matter how big it is, even though it's based a hundred, uh, it'll be, uh, scalable to very small or very big. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a view box that is starts at zero and goes to a hundred a hundred and so that we can keep track of what's going on here we're going to style it and so that we can see it we're going to create a border that's green and solid and here is our box right here okay so now that we have our box all set up our svg all set up we're going to create a path and this path is going to have a stroke that's green and uh, our stroke width it's going to be very thin so like 0.2 okay so now we have our path stroke and what we're going to do is we're going to create little grid lines at 10 across and 10 around so that we can see what we're doing so the first thing we're going to do is create one that um, that starts here at so what we did was we have our line and it's going to put our pen at 10 across 10 on the X axis and zero at the top. Okay. So uh, zero from the top at the Y axis. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create nine more of those copy or actually eight more of those two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine I think it should be and then we're just gonna push these over by tw by ten each time okay so now we have our vertical grid and to create our horizontal grid we're gonna do the same idea But this time we're going to start at the X axis of zero and the Y axis of 10. And we're going to make a horizontal line that is, um, oops, sorry. Then we're going to make a horizontal line that goes over a hundred. And then we have our first one. And then we're just going to go ahead and push these over by 10. And there we have it. Now we have our little grid lines that we're going to use. And we're going to use this to see how drawing a path works so well. So the next path we're going to do, we're going to draw a uh, we're going to we're going to draw an an arrow, just a simple arrow, and I'm going to show you how this all works. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to just do the same over here, say copy and paste okay so let's go ahead and draw our first arrow so what we're going to do is we're going to draw two arrows and I'm going to show you how cool path works so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our pen now to set our pen we're going to set our pen um, let's just make a long skinny arrow here so what we're going to do is we're going to create our pen right here at M same way we did before We're going to say M goes over, let's say, 2. So we're going to go X on the 2 and Y on the 10. So 20, 10. I'm sorry if I misspoke. I meant 20 by 10. So because we're going 2 over and 1 down. Okay. So that's where we're going to start our pen. 
and then we're going to do a horizontal line that's going to go so we started at 2010 and we're going to go over all the way to let's go over one or let's go over to 50 so one two three four five to 50 and we're going to make sure that our stroke width is nice and big so we can see it okay so now we have our pen that we went from m2010 okay we went over 20 and went down 10 and then we went uh, we created a horizontal line from there that goes over 250 notice we didn't go from here 50 over we went 250 so we went one two three four five we went to the 50 line the 50 yard line okay so that's what the difference is we'll talk about how the capital and the lowercase works a little later so the next part of our arrow is we're going to draw a line up so we're going to go to zero we're going to go up so we're going to go since this is a simple line since this is a vertical line okay so we have our vertical line and we put it up to zero okay so now we're at our pen is at one two three four five two at 50 zero 50 across and zero now this black here is because we we didn't set a fill color and since we didn't set a fill color it filled it up with the default which is black so that's really simple to fix we're going to fix it over here we're just going to say fill equals none and there we have it okay so the next part of our arrow is we're going to go from here and we're going to bring it down to here so again we're going to do 10 20 30 40 50 60 and then we're going to go down 10 20. so we're going to go down to 60 by 20. so since that's not a horizontal or vertical line but a line that's kind of crooked like this kind of uh, angled we have to say line we have to draw a line okay so our line is going to like we said before we're going to go to 60 by 20. and that's there's our point right here so as you can see we're just drawing our arrow through so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here we're going to go to 50 by 10 20 30. so do another line 50 by 30 and that's our other part now notice it's going to be a little bit crooked so we shouldn't have said 50 and 30 we should say 50 and 10 20 30 40 easily fixed now we have our arrow the way we want it to be so we're going to go uh, to the next point we're going to do a vertical line and we're going to go up to 10 to uh let's see 10 20 and 30. okay and then we're going to go this way so we're going to bring our horizontal line a horizontal line is going to go over here to 20. very nice and now all we have to do is close by saying z and there's our arrow so let's go ahead and fill up our stroke with green i know i'm in a green kick today but and there's our arrow so now we can push our arrow over so this line here was this 50 40 line so if we we're here at 10 20 30 40 50 and then we went to down 40 let's see so just to make this a little bit better we can see that we have our m2010 so we went over 20 and down 10 and then we did a horizontal line to the 50 yard line so we did 10 20 30 40 50 and here's our horizontal line and then we went to a vertical line and we set that vertical line at zero and then we went to left 60 which is right here this is the 60 yard line 
and then we then went down to 20. So if we want to make this point a little more jagged, instead of going to the 60 yard line, we can go to the 70 yard line. So we're going to go to the 70. And now it's a little bit pointier. If we go to 80, now we have a proper arrow here. You see that? Let's even bring it out to 90 and see if that's any better. Yeah, I like it at 80. Very nice. Okay. So now, here's our issue. We're using all capital um, letters here. The reason we do it, and if we use capital letters, if we move any of the, the starting point, if I move our starting point, nothing happens to the rest of these because these are all set by the grid. So if I went ahead and said M equals 10 by 10, it just brings it over to 10 by 10. And the rest of the arrow stays put. Now, if we did the same thing, let's go ahead and make a new path. Okay, we're going to fill it none for now. And so now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to make these relative. And I'm going to show you how that works. So let's put our next arrow below this arrow. So let's bring the arrow to here. So again, we can we start our arrow with a capital M and we're going to bring it to this point right here. So we can see that this point is 20 over and we got to count from the top. So let's put our arrow here and it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So we're at 20, 60. Okay, so nothing's going to show up right now because all we did was we moved our pen to this point. But now this time we're going to move it relative. So we're going to use small letters. So we're still going to do a horizontal line. But this time, instead of saying that the horizontal line will stop at the 50 yard line right here, we're going to say that we're going to go over by 30. Now we end up at the same spot, but what we said was, we're going from where we were and we're going to move plus 30 in this direction. Whereas here we said we're moving to the 50 yard line. Here we're saying we're moving up 30 or we're moving positive 30 to the 50 yard line. Okay. So now to get the same idea here, we have to say vertical line, but we're going to go minus 10 in the vertical direction. Now you see where we're going, right? Now, if we want to go to the same spot right here, this time when we draw our line, we have to say we're going to go plus one, two, three. So plus 30 and then plus, let's see, this is one, two, and plus two down. So plus 20. And it's now what we did was we said we went, we added third added 30 so we were here and we added one two three and then we came down two more okay now to go this way we have to go negative and to go this way we're still going positive because we're going down so now we're going to go negative one two three so let's put our new line at negative 30 but we're still moving in a positive direction going down so we're going to go one two so 20 and there is our next part of our arrow this time again we're going to go negative 10 so we're going to go vertically negative 10 and then this time we're going to go horizontal but we're going to go in a negative direction so we're going to go horizontal how much negative are we going to go so we're going to go one two three 30 and again we can close and again we're going to fill this up with green and now we have two similar arrows here now what's the difference however the difference is going to be is that if i again if i move my 
starting point to let's say zero or uh, 10 by 10, if I wanna move it over by 10, I can't do it because the rest of these are absolute values. So I'd have to push, bring this back to where it was. Now, if I move this port starting point, and let's say we wanna move it to the right, let's say the one, two, 20 more. So we're gonna start at M40. Now, the entire thing moves over by 20. Why does that happen? Well, because all of these rest of these are relative to our starting point, which was this M. Now we can move it all the way over to the beginning here. We can go to zero and we can move it down by one. So we can move it down to 70. So we can move our arrow all around just by moving these two points right here. Whereas this one, we'd have to move all of these points in order to move our arrow. So now when we want to manipulate our arrow here or any other thing we have, we can just move everything around by moving it over. So that's relative, absolute paths and relative paths. Um, if you like this tutorial on paths, just let me know and I'd be more than happy to use this same grid system to show you how to do circles and rectangles, polygons, anything else like that. Um, and uh, it's really easy when you can actually visualize how this all works. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.